unfortunately some people may say I wasn't, but anyway I wasn't good enough. And since then I found my way through the system. Uh, my first uh, reaction, having not been able to see the GP immediately, was to go to the walk-in centre. Unfortunately, it's something to drive me there. And uh, I'm glad I did go to the walk-in centre because although I'd had um, very obvious injuries, I had no idea that I was injured in the way that I was injured. And had I not gone to the walk-in centre, I wouldn't have known. Um, the walk-in centre um, did their business and said, well, we're sorry, but you're not really one for us. You have to go to A&E as quick as you can go, which I then did. And when I was in Arrow Park, I was shocked, although I already knew that there was a huge problem in the health service because of funding, I was absolutely shocked to see a huge, long row of people on trolleys, trolleys. And I was another five hours whilst I waited for the trolleys to go. In fact, altogether, including the EC, I was more than six hours waiting there and had absolutely excellent um, a treatment. Well, that was on the 2nd of May, and since then I've gone through the business of uh, Walter Wilton and so on. Um, that was a salutary experience for me, and I know how difficult it would have been for me, just as it would have been for other people, without a walk-in centre available to be able to go to, to get the information and advice to know that you were injured in a different way from what you thought, and you had to go somewhere else as well. I wouldn't have known that. And um, with respect, I mean, I don't doubt your sincerity, but I can't help feeling that on the face of it, you had set about, um, make, you've made a decision to close, and I think, with respect, that you were in the arguing from the decision and not to a decision. And that's how it looks to me. So, 
the reason why it has to be different this time, and needs to be different this time, and will be different this time, is because I think for the first time, because of necessity, the leaders of the health and care economy and world have come together. Um, we have committed to a change and we've been able to account for that change. And there's, there's a number of things that are happening around that. There's not only the front door streaming, but also we have to actually um, look at how general practice and primary care is, it, is provided in a different way. We have to look at the implementation of something called SAFER on our wards, which is senior review, all patients having an expected discharge date, looking at the flow of patients through the hospital, making sure they have early discharge of 33% of the patients by midday, the number of hospitals working on 17%, and making sure that all, all patients have access to senior review, and that's on all wards. We also have to look, working with colleagues in the local authority, at how um, we, we manage the domiciliary care market. Um, we have to look at how uh, we integrate 111 with GPI to balance. So there are a lot of things that we need to put in place that are within the urgent care review. Um, to the point arguing from a decision not to a decision, again, we can accept the perception of people that that is the case. Um, we have been very clear about the um, pressure to resolve the issue that we've been put under from the regulatory bodies. Um, we are also <coughs> clear that we've looked at all the available options within <coughs> our grasp that were immediate to get us from that meeting on the 13th of July, um, the other eye hauling session on the 10th of August, um, to the 4th of the 4th of September where implementation was expected to start happening and to have that program to get us through the winter, which um, all, all my colleagues that think in the NHS are very concerned about. And if Karen wants to add anything. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm not too sure that there's much more I can add. I've got but two more questions that I have to say, so if there's anything you want to say, maybe in response to the two other people. All I would add that I think is important for us to consider because it's important now and it will be important when the CCG go to consultation on urgent care and how we are looking at a will as a system. The acuity issue, I think it's your point about uh, is there a rise in numbers. It's not necessarily a rise in numbers that's the concern. The, concern, the, the numbers fluctuate but there's still there's a mean. The issue is the acuity and complexity of comorbidity. Everybody around this table will know that as you get older, you get more and more different things happening to you, and they're chronic diseases, so you don't get one illness, you've probably got two or three, including an ageing situation. So the acuity is raised, the complexity is raised. When you have that clinically, the presentation is the vulnerability risk is much, much higher. And that includes something as simple, for you and me might not make a difference, but something as simple as lying on a trolley for more minutes than you can lie on a trolley. So that's a lung problem, that's a skin problem, that's a drug problem. All of this is starting to peak. And we're not the only hospital system. There are many hospitals looking at this in NHS England now. But that's very important now, Chair and it will be more important as we move forward in terms of consultation to what we need to do with urgent care more sustainably. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, Casanori and then Casanori must pass. And then I'm going to start and I'm going to move the recommendation. I just hope everyone can hear me because I haven't got a mic here. I haven't got a mic here. Yeah, I'll take it here. So just, just to sum up, triage was in place and then taken away, which led to the deterioration of patient care at APH. This is not an Eastern problem, it's a resource problem at APH. Yeah. And that's what you're saying to me, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there isn't enough resources at APH to give people the care they need. What, do you have, what have you done? You've taken the resources from Eastern, making their situation worse. What should have happened is more resources should have been allocated to our part, not taken away from Eastern. Yeah. Where are the resources? Where are the resources? If the problem is that APH is underfunded, which you've stated it is, yes. because you haven't got the, the proper funding, there's the proper staff in place to be able to, to get the figures that you're looking for, 
So you've taken staff from Eastern to, to supplement their needs. Okay, thanks. Or, or, what are you doing to lobby the government to make sure Ara Park is funded properly so that patients aren't at risk of, of what you're talking about happening, where people are lying on trolleys and all the rest of it that you've talked about? As a scrutiny committee, I'm asking as elected member, what are you doing to force this government to fund the NHS properly okay, at Arab Park you. Hospital? Yeah.
Um, but there's been no reference in any of this discussion about better access to GP practices, which would seem to me to um, be the first thing, and I know that from anecdotal evidence from my constituents, that access to GP services has deteriorated in the last 12 months and long ways of years for first appointment to be made. Having said that, I'm going to move um, a recommendation which I ask the uh, committee to consider. Uh, first of all, committee thanks Simon Banks and Karen Howell from Royal CCG for their attendance and short notice to explain the reason for the decision to close the Eastern Walking Centre with one week's notice without referring it to this committee for scrutiny in advance of that closure. The committee notes the explanation that the statutory responsibility of health providers to report significant changes in service delivery was overridden on this occasion because of their belief that the situation was so urgent that not to take this action would represent a serious risk to the safety of staff and patients. The committee also notes the information given of the directive from the Secretary of State for health to introduce streaming into AAE departments by mid-September. However, we remain concerned that the pressures on AAE at Arrow Park have been present, understood and reported for a considerable period of time and that the reasons for this are complex. We therefore believe that planning for this change could and should have taken place at an earlier stage, so allowing the proper consultation to be carried out and also for the statutory duty to report the change to this committee to be fulfilled. We also believe that in taking this decision, insufficient consideration has been given to the difficulties this closure will present to those living in that part of the borough, the reduced accessibility to a Arrow Park Hospital brought about by the recent withdrawal of the only direct bus service from Eastern Borough Park and the information given to members of this committee that the streaming system recommended by the People Overview and Scrutiny Report in its uh, Reducing Avoidable Admissions Report, which was implemented and then withdrawn within a year, um, was, we were told, uh, because it didn't reduce the pressure on A&E, as anticipated. We therefore request a further report which details the impact of the closure on rural residents, particularly those living in that part of the borough, any change in the performance in our Park Hospital a &E, and any savings which are realised as a result of this action be presented to the next meeting for further scrutiny, and that's a November meeting. We also request that Wirral CCG reconsider this decision and that future plans to improve performance in A&E are developed in such a way that other vital parts of the health service are protected for residents in all parts of the world. And I'm asking members to consider that. Thank um, you. Yes, Phil. Um, thank you very much. I realise I was actually to that. Speak up, please. Yes. I think there's a point that needs adding which I believe is strengthening. In your last paragraph, you were saying about the reconsideration of the decision. I'd like to ask the committee to insert that this group to the committee calls upon the CCG to recognise this as a formal request for early reinstatement of the service and to respond to the concerns raised quickly. And that would fit in with your last paragraph before we talk about the uh, need to recognise the future plans as well. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, that's a request to amend the yes. notice of intent. Yes. 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 Is there a second of that?
We therefore believe that planning for this change could and should have taken place at an earlier stage, so allowing for proper consultation to be carried out and also for the statutory responsibility duty to report the change to committee to be fulfilled. We also believe that in taking this decision, <coughs> sufficient consideration has been given to the difficulties this closure could present to those living in that part of the borough. The reduced accessibility of our park hospital brought about by the recent withdrawal of the only direct bus service from Eastham to Arrow Park and the information given to members of this committee that the streaming system recommended by the people in overview, uh, people overview and scrutiny report in its reducing avoidable emissions report which was implemented and then withdrawn within less than a year was withdrawn we were told as it did not reduce the pressure on AME as anticipated. We therefore request that a further report which details the impact of the closure on rural residents, particularly those living in that part of the borough, any change in the performance in A&E at Harrow Park Hospital and any savings which are realised as a result of this action be presented to the next meeting for further scrutiny. And then the last paragraph is one which Councillor Gilchrist has moved amendment to and actually inserted to the right point and that's been seconded by Councillor Mosspratt. We also request that Wirral CCG reconsider this decision and... That, that's the point, Chair. The Scrutiny Committee calls upon the CCG to recognise this as a formal request for early reinstatement of the service <coughs> and to respond to the concerns raised quickly. Okay. Uh, can we accept that amendment? Yeah. Agreed. Okay, can I ask members to... Are you happy with that? Yeah. Uh, can I ask members, all those in favour of the um, recommendation as amended by Councillor Gilchrist? Show. And that's unanimous. And uh, thank you, Simon and Karen, for coming. Um, thank you, members of the public, for your patience. Um, I'm going to ask for literally a five minute break, just so that anybody who was there for that item and now wants to leave can do so.